Hi everyone, this is going to be my fourth video or third video on the subject regarding folder permissions. So we're kind of going to rewind back to where we were and say, this is just an enhancement on the previous two or three. So if you haven't seen them already, you might want to go back and watch them. Um, for those who have, this section is going to cover trusted domains. So I have a trust.net domain and I have a lab.net domain. And both of these are set up as VMs in my uh, lab. And what we're going to do is we've got a one-way trust between them. Uh, we're not covering the one-way trust or even trust in this video. We're just going to assume that you already have a trust set up between these domains. So in this case, this allows me to do a lookup for a user that's sitting in my trust domain. And by using the get ad user with the slash server switch, I'm able to put in the domain of which I'm searching against. This is going to be very vital and important because when we're looking up SID IDs, which is going to be necessary to add for the permissions in this scenario, um, we need to be able to tell it where to get them. Because it will just make the assumption that they're local if you don't tell it. And obviously the user in question is in the remote domain and therefore doesn't exist. We're also going to add it to our temp folder. So we've got two input parameters here. So we've got our username, we've got our folder name. And the domain is hard coded in the next part of the script where we've got our AD user lookup, where we're saying, okay, go to my trust.net domain. From that, we're gonna write the output of the user ID, and then we're gonna go ahead and just simply check the permissions. So we're grabbing our, our temp folder. We're then gonna compare whether that temp folder permissions has the user already existing. And if not, that's when we're gonna go ahead and add that user. So here we're gonna give them modified permissions, and then we're going to set that access rule back against the folder. And just in case, and I emphasize just in case, because there shouldn't be any problems, obviously, we're going to do a, a quick validation at the end and confirm does the user exist on that folder as access has been granted, etc. So now we're just going to go ahead and run this script. So we'll just clear the terminal, we'll paste in the context. And again, if you're interested, this will be posted in the comments below. I'll, I'll put the link on to uh, GitHub where you can see the full code. So don't worry if you can't follow along this quickly. Um, now, since I already had the permissions open, you can see that it hasn't refreshed. So I need to close the permissions on this folder once more. Open it again. And we should see here, because we now have a remote user, we see the SID ID. Now, depending on the, the trust level that you've got, if you've got a bi-directional trust, uh, in this case, I've got a one-way trust, so I can't look up that user identity directly, so I'm just seeing the SID ID. But you see the SID ID does match the value that we returned from the script. So that user does have access to the permissions on that folder. Um, normally, you would need to share the folder as well for them to be able to see it, but you get the general idea. You can add users or groups because you can also use the AD user groups uh, by adding the dash server to look up that remote SID ID.